Uh, good day, everyone. It's a uh, max profit today. Uh, we should all be excited. Super coach started, so we can start playing around around with our team. Look, uh, today's video is to explain what a cash cow is and how to trade them effectively to maximise your profit and get money into your salary cap. But by doing this wisely, you can use the funds to upgrade another player in your team to a gun player, like Gary Ablett, for example. So, what is a cash cow? Typically, they're priced from around ninety-five thousand to two hundred thousand. Uh, they're normally from last year's draft and they range from anything from a first round draft pick in the national draft to a mature play pick in the, in the rookie draft. And they must be ready to play one, round one or two. Uh, there'll be other cash cows that, that, that will play later in the season, but this is specifically for your starting lineup. Now, um, the cash cows, their price will increase after the third game and continue to rise until their break even scores match their average. Um, by round 10, your $100,000 cash cow could be worth up to $325,000 or more. And that's an ideal time to trade them down and use that profit into your salary cap to trade another play in your team to a gun. Now, um, I'm going to go to uh, last year's Supercoach team. Now, um, I've still got access to it. It's a little, little trick I've, I've come up with. Um, so anyway, look, um, if you look at your, your teams generally, you're going to have your, your gun players and your mid-range players and then you start putting in, in your cash cows. Example there, Nick, Nick Dygan. And I'm going to use uh, Jack Darling. For, for the purpose of the exam, I want to show you next. Now, if you look at his, um, these are his uh, um, prices from last year. If you look at round three, it's gone up to 163,000, and his price keeps going up until it pe peaked in round 10 at 327,300. So that's about the time his um, break even score matched his average, and as you see there, he didn't rise in price, in price again. Now, um, that would have been an opportune time to, to trade him out of your team. So, Tendai Mazungu. He played the second game in round 10. So between round 10 and 11, if you traded down Jack Darling to Mazungu, you made a $227,000 profit. Now, uh, if you're like me, I like to keep at least $100,000 or more in the salary cap. So using that as an example, so I had 100 grand, I've got now got 327,000. So I could uh, trade another cash cow on your team or, or, or a mid-range player and get a gun player. Now I'm gonna use um, Dane Swan as an example. You see here 617,000. And round 11 is 447,500. So I could have used those funds from the cash cow to get a gun player, like, like Dane Swan in this example, for, for, for a massively discounted price. Now, if you see here, his, his scores were still quite high, but um, you're happy with those scores. But because his um, break even score is, is pretty much his average, and he needs to maintain his average for, for his score to stay the same, and it's fairly hard to do. So just, just one bad game is going to um, make his uh, score go down. And you see there, he had four bad ones in a row. You got him at a bargain price there, and, and look at the scores he got when he when he when he came back from uh, Arizona last year. So um, look, I'm just going to show you another little example here of some trades that I did last year. So if you look here, I traded out a cash cow, uh, Daniel Harris, this one that I had an upgrade to to a gun in Gary Ablett. You see there in round one. There's round one there. He was worth 125,700. And here's another example there, getting trading down a cash cow, making a profit there, and trading up a cash cow. Kerno, who was worth 100 and something thousand first round, to a gun like, like Bartel. He, he was at a bargain price as well because I think he got, got, got injured in the game once and, and got a really low score, which affected his price. So, um, oops, sorry. We'll just go over here. I actually, so this is uh, this year's uh, Super Coach, 2012, and I'll just fill my team with some random players. Some bright spark thought that they'd upgrade the site. I, I reckon last year's, year's one looked a lot better. That actually looked, looks a little bit terrible. But, but anyway, so look, here's an example of uh, Brendan Goddard. Again, this is from last year's um, Supercoach. So you see his price was 633 grand, discounted at 418,600 by, uh, by round 11. So look, uh, sometimes it's a risk not to pick the most expensive players in, in, in the competition, but if their price does go down, then, then you can pick them up at a bargain price. And it's going to happen. It's not necessarily going to always be Goddard or Swan, but those really high players, uh, expensive players, there's going to be one, two or three throughout the season that, that are going to drop in price for various reasons, and, and, and they're the ones to, to, to jump onto when, when you trade your cash cows out. So um, look, we'll just go, go back to I've got a little, little graph here on um, the discounted players of Swan, uh, Goddard and Bartel, so just pause that and have a read of that if you wanted to. So, so look, ju just remember your, your cash cows, Moo Moo. Yeah, that was pretty funny, wasn't it? Um, look, they're, they're going to make lots of money. I wish I had that much real money. And uh, you can upgrade, use that money to upgrade your, to, to a gun player like, like Dane Swan. 
it is looking pretty ugly there. Maybe it's because I've stretched him out a little bit. So, look, just some tips. Don't worry if you don't get your cash cows right in round one. If there's one you've missed, you can always trade them in in, in round three before the price goes up. Look, ideally you want to have X number of cash cows strategically placed in your team to upgrade them to a gun, and I'll explain that in another video. Now also, if your cash cow's a keeper, then consider trading them down for one of your underperforming plays and keeping that cash cow. A good example of that was Michael Barlow a few years ago. Now here, this one's very important. Don't trade it. Don't trade a cash cow until after they've played the, th the second game and before they've played the third game. I traded in a player last year um, after the first game, Michael Coe, because I thought he was going to be a gun. I, I was um, keeping an eye on him. He scored 80 and 80 in his first two games. But in the second game, the last quarter, he tore his hamstring off the bone and didn't play again for the year. So I wasted two trades because I had to trade him out and didn't make a profit on him. So always make sure that you trade him in between the second and third game. Now, um, make sure you trade your cash cows close to their peak price. And if you're not sure when that is, there's a variety of places you can source this information from, and I'll post those in one of my next videos. And look, there's also going to be plenty of cash cows playing mid to late season. Here's just some examples of players, Cameron Peterson, Jacobs, Mazungu, Isaac Smith, Paul Poopolo is another one. Now, look, um, if you, you trade your cash cows wisely, it's going to separate yourself from the pack, and you end up with a team of guns. Um, if, if you do it right, your scores are going to should skyrocket mid-season. Now, I generally do, do quite well in, uh, um, in, in the top 5,000 most years. Um, I, I look at teams mid-season, I think, geez, you know, I've got a good team, but these, team, these, these teams have got absolute guns in there. And the reason why they've got guns in the league position is because they, they, they're doing that wisely. They're, they're training them wisely. I'm, I'm a bit of a traderholic. I go a bit, bit crazy in the first few rounds, and I've got to stop doing that, and I'm going to try and do that this year and uh, see, see if I can uh, score, score a bit higher. Now, um, you know... Um, so if you do that right, you, your, your scores are going to get better. You can hopefully win, win, win your uh, premiership. Um, you know, you, you might even be in, in, in there with a chance to win the cart. Look, that's going to be pretty hard to do. Only one person's going to win out of 400,000. Look, ho hope, hopefully it's you, but look, I, I really prefer it's, going to, it's me, but you know, I'm pretty sure it won't be. So look, uh, just coming up, I'm going to do a video for beginners showing them how to build a good team from scratch. So that's basically for someone that hasn't really, really played too often. I'm going to do a video revealing some trade secrets. And I'm also going to um, let you know this year's cash cows and which ones to avoid. And I'll be doing that after I watch the, the NAB Cup. Okay, look, that's it. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.